Alright, let's talk about the Swiss Army Knife class, the Engineer. You've got a bunch of specialized powers, which are all good in their role. But, unfortunately that makes it a little bit difficult to recommend a generalized build path. Uh, what you do is going to depend on what bonus power you want, and also what squad mates you like to bring with you. But, I'll come up with something. In general, there's probably two schools of thought on the engineer. You can have the direct damage engineer or more crowd controller engineer. Both work. And it sort of depends, like I said, on what bonus power you want to take. Or you can flip it around and say the bonus power depends on which one you want to do, either way. Uh, this one has Neural Shock right now. And then your vanilla engineer powers our overload, you know how that works, incinerate, you know how that works. The trademark power is combat drone, which is a CC power. Good consider a distractor power. Basically, you cast a little drone. It floats there and distracts things. Next you have cryoblast, you know how that works. Hacking, you've heard of that before, and then the passive is tech mastery. This is predominantly a power recharge passive. But the cool thing is it also has research project discount, so that's kind of nice. Anyway, the first path I'm going to show is more direct damage engineer using Neural Shock. Neural Shock you can somewhat replace Cryoblast, which is why I have it here. In any case, when you import a level 50 character from Mass Effect 1, you start at level 3, so you have 4 points. Go ahead and get overload 2, that unlocks incinerate, so you can go pick up the first rank of there. That'll leave 1 point to bank, or you can invest it right away in Tech Mastery, but it's no big deal. But the next thing you want to get is Combat Drone 2, and then you can go ahead and get Incinerate 2, and then you'll have your passive, and that should be a total of 11 points, which is level 5 and where you do Professor. So, in Professor you have Suns, so Overload, and then you use Incinerate on Blood Pack, and you have Drone to distract them. You probably want to cast a Drone to start an encounter, and then you can move to your other powers. In general, that's sort of how Engineer works, is you Send out a drone and then try to use your powers while the drone's still alive. You'll notice the rank 2 drone has a 120% health bonus, so that should help keep it alive. Drone has a little gimmicky attack, it doesn't do a lot of damage, but it helps lock down a target. Anyway, Archangel comes along around a level 7. That's 15 total points. You can have something that looks like Overload 2, Incinerate 3. Drone 2, Passive 1, and Shock 1. And then, of course, Horizons at level 12. With this build progression, you're gonna get rank 4 of Incinerate, go to Heavy Incinerate, or Incineration Blast. I prefer Blast, of course, for AoE damage. And then you should also be able to have had uh, Passive ranked up to level 3. This should improve your cooldowns a bit, give you a little more health, and, and make you a little bit better overall. Now, one of the reasons I ranked up Incineration Blast quickly is that what you can do is go more rapidly into Cryo Blast on Morden, and when he gets to Cryoblast rank 4 and takes his AoE Cryoblast off a 4.5 second cooldown, which is relatively similar to Shepard's Incineration Blast cooldown after tech cooldown bonuses. It's also one of the reasons on this path I'm avoiding Cryoblast because you take Morden with you to cover that. Anyway, as you continue along, you'll run into 
collector cruiser around level 16 or so. Go ahead and get the last rank of Tech Mastery. And in most cases I like Demolisher and this makes the most sense on a direct damage engineer because you have the power of damage bonus. And nice power recharge time, minus 20. Mechanic, the difference mainly that you get a power duration bonus, which is going to be more helpful for CC powers rather than direct damage powers. So in this case, take Demolisher, and in general Demolisher is probably a little bit better early game. So we'll get that, then we should be able to get Drone 3. And you can either uh, save your remaining 3 points, or go ahead and get Cryoblast Rank 2 in preparation for grabbing some AI hacking. Did 16, you wouldn't have been able to get rank 4 combat drone, but it, if you managed to delay Collector Cruiser until rank 17, you would have gone ahead and got combat drone 4. The two evolutions there are attack versus explosive. Now these, in very simple terms, have different roles. Attack's a little bit better for locking down more elite targets. So you'll notice that your health bonus is 160%, and then you have your just little silly attack that does 40 damage. Explosive drone, on the other hand, does this pulse that explodes in 6 meter radius and does 100 damage. So, it's up to you. Either one really works, but like I said, they're a little bit different. I alternate between which ones I like the most. So, I'm just going to pick attack this time to help lock down elites, but explosive also works. And then the next thing you want to do is probably start investing on AI hacking or overload, depending on what you're doing. If you're just doing pure Merc missions, then go ahead and level up overload first, or if you're going to fight synthetics, you might want to get a rank or two of AI hacking. The latter is what I usually do, so I can... CC Synthetics on Haystrom, plus I like to take Miranda and Garrus a lot anyway, so I have Overload covered. In any case, go ahead and work towards the third rank of Hacking as you pass level 20. 21, 22, and 23 actually. And then you can go back and work towards overload and get area overload. That takes you to 30 and you'll have one spare point with this build. But this is a decent direct damage build on the Engineer. Works with Neural Shock. And then you could have Cryoblast if you want to freeze a target. Neural Shock's really at least as good as Cryoblast though. But Cryoblast obviously works on synthetics. If you have semi-elite synthetics, you can use Cryoblast to freeze them so you can get bonus damage on them. So that's something of a balanced Engineer build that's more direct damage works on synthetics or organics. Go ahead and look at the bonus powers now as our segue into the other engineer style. First of all, your defense powers are still not very good. Barrier fortification, GSB, don't worry about that. The other 1.1ers, Slam, 
is okay if you want to set up Warp Bomb. It's very similar to Neural Shock, though. Uh, stasis isn't horrible if you need to lock down uh, an Elite or get bonus damage on them. But Drone can lock down Elites fairly confidently with Attack Drone. So I don't worry about that. Shredder arm ammo is still terrible, but Warp ammo isn't horrible. It gives you a barrier option. The two grenade powers don't make a lot of sense on Engineer. I avoid them. Dominate's interesting for an Engineer that has the ability to control both Synthetics and Organics. The Puppet Master Engineer. Uh, Reeve's actually quite good. You can completely replace Incinerate with it and have a barrier, an anti-barrier power. Also synergizes well with Drone, where you can throw out a Drone to distract things and then start hitting them with Reeve. Engineer's one of the better classes for Reeve, actually, as a result. Energy Drain, you can completely replace Overload and just run around spamming that on shields and synthetic en enemies. And last but not least, AP Ammo, which is what I'm going to take to show a more controlling engineer. Which is interesting because the bonus powers are flip-flopped on my damage engineer. I took a control power and on the control engineer I'm taking an ammo power. Up is down and left is right. You could take warp ammo if you wanted, but I think AP fits a little bit better with Engineer. Do, do, do. Just hold on a second. Alright, so this time we'll look like this at level 1. And basically the idea this time Instead of avoiding Cryoblast, we're going to be getting Cryoblast, and that's going to become Shepard's kind of bread and butter power in combination with the Drone. Import level 3. Go ahead and get Overload rank 2 again to unlock Incinerate. Get Incinerate 1. And then we have AP 1 for a little bit of bonus damage on our weapons. So far, so good, and it looks pretty similar to before. Uh, your next step is to go ahead and get Drone 2, and then that'll unlock Cryoblast, and go ahead and get Cryoblast 1. And then you'll have another spare point at level 5, and go ahead and get Tech Mastery 1. So with this build on Professor, the difference between the last time is now you're going to be using Cryoblast as single target CC, also to generate some bonus damage, and then you're using Incinerate on armor. And of course, Combat Drone to start off encounters. For level 7, at Archangel, what I'd actually do, instead of leveling up Cryoblast, since the middle evolutions don't really make a lot of difference, I go ahead and put points in Tech Mastery to get your overall recharge rate down. And that should cover your level 7 build and should be relatively decent early game like this. Next you'll hit Horizon at level 12 and then what you're going to want to do there is work towards max maxing tech mastery and here it's a little more debatable what you want to do. I'd stick with Demolisher to boost your incinerate damage a little bit, but you can use mechanic. Either way, it's not going to make a huge difference. You mainly want your power recharge bonus from passive anyway. These are identical. I don't usually think that duration is hugely beneficial, but it does benefit drone here. Uh, but of course, damage is good. I'm just going to leave it on Demolisher, though. And... Should have also been able to get Chrome 3 and Cryo 2 for Horizon. 
Now I could have put some points actually into AP ammo to get a little more weapon damage. But the problem is that... Well, the AP ammo bonus damage would be nice early game before I get weapon upgrades. It's not so hot later game. The other thing you could have done is just pull the point out of the ammo if you want. But it's up to you. I'm trying to really make a path where you don't have to respec constantly or pull points out of things. But Of course it's up to you. You should have plenty of Ezo. Pretty much after this, what you want to do is continue leveling Cryoblast. So, you should be able to get that up to the full Cryoblast by level 16. Where you might hit Collector Cruiser. What's important about this is that if you have picked up Samara, before the cruiser -ing. and finagled your missions correctly so she can be loyal, she can get potentially area reeve, which would be really nice. Because that can barrier strip multiple collectors or multiple husks, and then you just hit them with a cryoblast. Which will make your life a lot simpler on that mission. It is kind of tricky to get her loyalty mission unlocked fairly early though. So you have to be careful with your mission order. And really after this you can do what you want. The main thing is getting Cryoblast up to 4. And you're also going to start encountering Geth enemies, but Cryoblast can CC Geth just as well as Organics. That's why it's nice. It also has a very fast cooldown. So, anyway, go ahead and get uh, the last rank of drone. And since we have full crow blast, I'm going to just go ahead and put attack drone on here as well. Use cryo blast full on moves, attack drone, to help with elites. And then, really. You're gonna work on hacking a bit. Get a couple ranks there. And then, of course, do what you want. If you're really gonna spam Cryoblast all the time, what you could do is max AP to Tungsten, or you could have done that even faster by not investing so heavily in hacking. But like I said, by this point in the game, the benefit of ammo power damage isn't going to be as substantial. I don't really find a lot of benefit in going to rank 4 hacking, but I'm just going to show the evolutions real quick. So that you can see the actual numbers. Improved hacking. We've got this giant shield on there. The duration lasts a long time, and I think it's usually counterproductive. You don't want your hack targets to have a lot of shield strength in case they survive because then you have to kill them anyway. It's actually a little bit better if your hacked enemies get killed by the normal enemies, because it's one less guy to worry about. And then a area AI hacking. Too many hacked units just hacked incompetent anyway, so I don't really like that evolution. So, like I said, it's up to you. One of the things you could have done was run energy drain for uh, shield regen and if you did that you'd want to max that to area drain but I'll just throw them in here tungsten otherwise area incinerate's a good choice uh, since I like Miranda and Garrus I won't want to even worry about area overload in this uh, controller Engineer, because there's so many options for area shield stripping. Miranda, Garrus, and actually Loyal Tally, so. That's about it for builds on Engineer. Like the rest of the casters, you start with pistols and and uh, SMGs, so. Your advanced weapon training is wide open. Shotguns are a good choice, though. 
run a shotgun, locust, and pistol. Pretty good all around setup. And as far as your armor goes, just try to max power damage if you can. Uh, that's all I can really say on that. It's not really too complicated. If you're doing the control engineer and don't actually need power damage, then you could go for anything really. But weapon damage is always a solid choice. Anyway, that's about it on the Swiss Army Knife. And only one class left.